So what's up guys? Merry Christmas. It's Baba Yaga here at Baba's altar. Anyway, I got a quick uh, story I want to tell you guys. And it's been a long time in the making that I thought about telling it. Because it's kind of it's long-winded, you know, and it probably won't take very long anyway. But because I've told it so many times. But uh, I know a lot of y'all have dreams. And I've had a lot of people tell me, and this is why I'm, I'm telling it. Is I've had a lot of people tell me it's just the man in black. It could be Santa Muerte. But I don't, I think if she was going to come to you in a dream, she'd probably come to you, to you in a way that would make you go, oh, okay, that's Santa Muerte. Because usually when she comes to people in dreams, you see her, not anything else, because she's kind of that way anyway. And even out of the realm of her being female or anything, or even just the Grim Reaper, if the Grim Reaper wants you to see the Grim Reaper, the Grim Reaper will show itself. So anyway, not that those are the same. Santa Marta and Grim Reaper, yada, 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 different things. But anyway, the point is, I'm going to tell you this dream. So anyway, uh, I remember I got in trouble for a lot of shit whenever I was like five. I came home from school one day, and apparently I just got this wild fucking urge to draw a bunch of shit on my wall that my mom didn't like. And uh, I got in some big-ass trouble. And, uh, I went to sleep, you know, and the behavior was kind of off, too. So, I'm not going to say it's like spirits and stuff that's, like, fucking following you around, literally. But, who the hell knows? So, this is just what I'm going to say. Um, first of all, people do have prophetic dreams. And, second of all, it doesn't matter what age. And, uh, third of all, we can't prove whether or not gods or deities or spirits do, in fact, completely exist or not. There's scientific proof for both sides. That they do and do not exist, sort of, except gods and things of that sort, because that's just, we're not going to talk about all that. So anyway, past all that, before there's any confusion or misinterpretations or something that I might argue with someone about, some, something I'll have to argue with someone about in the, uh, in the comments. Anyway, when I was young, when I was in pre-K, I was five, I came home, did a bunch of shit, it was drastic, got in trouble, went to sleep, and I remember a long time ago, the only scary movie I had seen besides, like, Jaws was Scream, and it really, it, it scared me, like, once, you know, because I wasn't expecting it, it just popped up on TV and freaked me out, and after that, I was pretty good. Now, as far as, like, imprinting that, this actually, when I seen that movie, uh, it was later on, when a little older and when it freaked me out that's why it freaked me out is because of this dream so anyway without further with without any more um drinks that i should not have uh i will tell you my dream so anyway in this dream i woke up and it was as a battlefield was around me and there was a globe of protection a halo of protection all around me uh, if anyone wants to know what I mean by what it looked like, think of Star Wars on Naboo whenever they have the giant shield up and the uh, uh, CIS is about to launch their attack. Okay, so that's kind of what it looked like, a giant halo, like a dome over me, a see-through. But there was a civil war going on around me in this really green, short grass field which was really weird because it was really cut nice so i looked in front of me on the ground and there were graves uh like four or five feet apart perfectly dug like five feet six feet deep and it was a graveyard and at the end of it was a man in black had long braided hair a lot of it it looked really pretty too and he had a mask with no facial features except you could tell it had a nose and it had the shape of a mouth but the eyes were totally blacked out there was nothing there and um, he had beings kind of with him you could tell there were spirits or demons or something of that nature with him so he had the presence and scared the shit out of me so I took off running and this beast started to approach me throughout my dreams after this 
So not him, but a beast of sorts, kind of like a wolf, a dog, or something like that. So anyway, I was watching Top Tens, uh, Most Amazing Top Tens, and they brought up the story of the beast, and you can go look it up on, I think it's Most Amazing Top Tens. Yeah, Most Amazing Top Ten. So anyway, I seen that, and I was like, you know, I'm going to make a video on it. So later on, after I had that dream, I had it again when I was 13 years old. And mind you, this time I got tired of running. And by that time, when you're 13 and you're hitting puberty and you have dreams, if not by then, where you have the attitude in a dream to be of an aggressive nature, you, you get shit done like you do your will. Um, I had that. I was ballsy, you know. So I kind of challenged him, it felt, but it wasn't what I expected. So I shook his hand. And mind you, this was pre-Assassin's Creed, because I don't want to hear none of that shit either. Because I've explained this to people before, and, you know, people think that you imprint from video games. Well, let me tell you this, guys. Whenever I shook this man's hand, but mind you, he had a black trench coat, uh, black long braided hair, white face. And the only thing I could find on him was maybe he was Targal, the Prince of Necromancy, or something like that. There's this really expensive book on the internet. It's the only place you find the name and the only place that you find a description of a tall, um, kind of a snide, very smart man that uh, can help you or protect you greatly. And kind of as a friend, not a foe, really, necessarily, but it's going to scare the shit out of you. So anyway, past that point, when I shook his hand... A blade came, hidden blade, sort of, in a manner. It kind of came from nowhere inside of his jacket, man. It was crazy, and it went through my hand. And it interlocked our grip, you know. And I was like, damn. So I, it freaked me out, and it was like as if he was saying, I'm going to be back. And uh, that's more or less all that I got from that. So later, I kind of left it alone and didn't think about it for many years, but I was Christian, so when I went to seminary, before I went to seminary, uh, I had a preacher chase me down at a crusade meeting for this Christian thing that we had at this high school because he said there were demons following me on this shit. So I went home that night and had a really fucked up dream, I had sleep paralysis for the first time, been there, done that already, don't know exactly. I know about the scientific things, you know, behind sleep paralysis, um, blood pressure can cause this, and all kinds of stuff, so... Anyway, <clears throat> I had that dream, it freaked me out, and then after that shit, I went to seminary, which is crazy, but I did go to seminary, studied a lot, learned a lot of shit. I know my Bible, so don't try to joke me on that either, I really do. And whenever I was at seminary, I woke up one night to glass breaking, and I'm telling you, I'm one of these people that I didn't believe that demons really could do all that, I thought it was just movie shit, so... Um, I had this old desk that was given to me by a great, great grandparent to my stepdad to me for a gift to go to, ch to college, right? To seminary. Cha -cha -cha -cha. I can't talk. I have to be a dream. So anyway, um, he gave me this table. Well, I had my picture inside of it. Well, that night I woke up to the glass breaking and I was like, what the fuck was that sound? And I kept looking around in my room and it was a real ominous feeling and quiet and still. And my fan wasn't working, you know, I had it off anyway, so I wasn't worried about it. Well, I got hot during the night. It freaked me out, so I turned the fan on, even though it was kind of broke. And uh, this broken fan, uh, it never quit, you know. It wasn't broke like that. All that was wrong with it was that uh, whenever I would run it, it would click a lot, you know. Well, that morning... Uh, whatever this was that was in this place, because there had been some bad shit happening in these, uh, these rooms of these, uh, these condominiums that we lived in by this college. And, man, let me tell you, I heard the glass break, and then that morning I woke up, and the same thing happened during the dream when I was at the crusade, uh, past the crusade that night, whenever I went home, from my mom being freaked out by this dude, me seeing this guy run across the room and go, hey, your son, you know, freaking out. Well, anyway, later on after that, the same thing happened. A fan in my room slowed down and stopped. I'm like, oh, shit, poltergeist shit. I ain't all into that. I don't, 
You know, like, I've seen shit happen in front of me, but I just don't give, I'm not going to give all credit to something that I don't know what it is, so I don't know. So that's all I'm going to say. But anyway, uh, the fan went to slow down, and uh, of course, being Christian at the time, super Christian, I was set up, and I said all kinds of mess, you know, and it left me alone. Well, in fact, it didn't leave me alone, because now it still follows me, and sometimes when I'm recording, it bothers the shit out of me, and uh, I just call it the shadow man, because I don't know what else to call it, but I know that I've heard people on uh, Reddit, this one guy, um, got this name, J-O-B-I-O-R-H-O-R, Joby Orhor, I know it sounds stupid, but hey man, if that means anything to anybody, let me know, go look it up on Reddit, uh, you'll easily find it, it should be at the top of the list, so, anyway, but, uh, but definitely though, Santa Muerte has opened my eyes to a lot of things, I had a dream the other night, where I was, uh, going down the road with my friends, we were chilling and everything, I was in the back of this truck, they got lost, I guess it, it kind of seemed they were drunk maybe or something, or they were intoxicated by some kind of force, and they were like, damn, we got off the road, you know, and I helped them get back on the road by jumping out of the back of the truck and getting on this highway, because they had pulled off of a, uh, wow, okay. they had pulled off of a highway that had Steel guardrails on the side, and somehow, I don't know how the fuck they did it, but it was weird, and in the dream, I got him back on the road, we were going down the road, and then later on, there's these trucks pushed over in the middle of the road, and I don't know what I was thinking, but I went over to them and I pushed them, because they seemed to look light, and they began to move, and when I pushed the first one off the road, so whatever, pushed the second one off the road, then I noticed, hey dude, you, that was weird, what the hell. So then after that, it's dark. There's a giant tree in front of me with handholds, you know, and a rope to climb. And this uh, really skinny witch-looking figure, what I would think to be like Papa Yeager, which is fucked up because I've had uh, in the name of Papa Yeager before when I was in Sugar Hill. There's ghosts everywhere down there. But when I was in Sugar Hill, I said that name, and I was in the woods by my house that night. Literally right in the woods when you walk out the back porch. And uh, the door slammed. So it was freaky, dude. And uh, it was dark as hell, too. And I was trying to get up the stairs. So I seen that thing in that dream the other night uh, run at me. And the only thing I could think is Bobby Yeager. It had white skin, long skinny arms and legs. And it had a wreath of deer antlers. Don't know. It was crazy. It chased me. I went up the tree. I found a handhold that had been made and it looked really thunder and lightning and really dark it was crazy dream and it was crawling up this other tree beside me and i kicked this tree because i kept kicking her down and she just kept coming so i kicked the tree down and when the tree fell it hit the ground it turned into an altar which is really significant it turned into a large tree that had been cut off at the top of the bottom with roots on the bottom and uh it had a wreath of horns on it as well which is really crazy, because I have uh, horns down there in my floor underneath my Santa Muerte. So, I don't know if y'all could see that. I got my kitty cat right here too, man. So, like, you know, I'm just chilling in the room, and, uh, yeah. But anyway, though, I seen that in that dream, man. And uh, the other night, and that affected me. And I had got scratched the other day again. That ain't the first time that's happened either. So I've had dreams. I've been scratched. I've heard shit. I've had things knock on doors at my old house. And all kinds of mess. And let me tell you, it's freaky. So even up here in this hotel, we've had the door open. Doors get unlocked. Um, yeah, so general spookiness. But Merry Christmas to you all. And I really want to ask please all you people out there that are uh, smart in the ways of satanic philosophy especially and others about other cultures and creeds and religions and belief whatever you want to call it um please hit me up on facebook uh, please 
me, Nathaniel Babayega Thompson. Please hit me up and uh, let me know what you think about this dream, uh, especially the one about the uh, the skinny lady with the wreath of horns, the white skin, the man in black with the long dreads and the white face. Those are the two mains that I'm really worried about. I've been searching this shit since I was a kid, and I am 26, the 22nd. So I just turned uh, 26, the 22nd, and uh, we'll see, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's my number already, see, 12, 22nd, 1994. Bunch of 12s and 2s and whatnot. So, numerologists, all you people who like numerology, let's hear, you know, I want to hear from everybody. Seriously. Um, when we post videos up on here, we all care about what you guys think because that's why we're doing it. So when you see a video, come over here and subscribe and like, man. Because, you know, we love you guys. We really do, and I care about y'all. And a special shout-out to uh, Donovan and uh, another homie of mine that I spoke to that I will not name because secrets. So anyway, uh, my brothers and sisters, this is Bobby Yaga at Bobble's Altar. And uh, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy Yuletide, you know. Happy solstice. Uh, be well, be healthy, be merry. Love one another in the bed tonight. You know, seriously, you know, take time out for one another and be personal because, you know, you, you, you men and women out there in these relationships, this time of year should be a time for healing, not depression and shit. So, that's what got me thinking about this earlier. And, uh, I want to hear from y'all. So anyway, this is Baba, and I'll talk to y'all later. Goodbye.